Huh? A message floated on the screen as my phone beeped. Hurry up and divorce that monster. I hurriedly opened the message screen and found that all the message had already been cancelled from being sent. It seems that the message sent by my friend was meant to be sent to my husband. That means you were having an affair, right? Wait, that's a misunderstanding. Okay, then what is this? When I cornered my husband and showed him something, he started wincing and shaking. My name is Sophia. I'm a 35-year-old office worker. My husband, Chris, and I have been married for 10 years. Our son, Nico, is now 7 years old and goes to elementary school. The happiest time for me is when my son tells me about what happened at school today and we enjoy dinner together as a family. My son has grown up to be a very good boy and my husband and I have a good relationship. We both work, so my mother takes care of my son during the week and I balance work with housework and child rearing. Our house is within walking distance of my parents' house, so my son often goes to my parents' house after school to play with my mother. I return home as soon as my work is finished and immediately pick up my son and we go shopping at the supermarket together before returning home to prepare dinner. Then, when my husband comes home, we all sit around the dinner table and enjoy talking and eating together. Every day was like this, but it made me happy. On holidays, we all go out together, and on three-day weekends, we go on trips. I wanted my son to have as many different experiences as possible, so once a month, we would always take a drive to a place we had never been before. When we take him to the aquarium or our farm, he looks happy with a twinkle in his eye. I thought that I would continue to spend my days with my son and my husband, making many memories in this way. Today was my son's birthday. Since it was a Sunday, my husband and I decided to have a home party. I have a group of four close friends from high school and we invited them, their children, my parents, and my husband's close friends to celebrate with us. My son blew out the candles on the big cake and everyone applauded. Then, we all ate the food we had prepared. In the evening, my parents went home, we put the children to bed, and the adults went into the evening drinking. My husband got along well with my friends and seemed to enjoy talking with everyone. Seeing my husband like that made me happy. I was happy to see my husband being so open with my good friends. When we had a barbecue in the garden, I invited my friends and my husband's friends to join us and we enjoyed a big dinner. They were all nice people, and I felt that I was truly living a happy life. After my son's birthday party, the next day was Monday, and I had to go to work. But I had a headache, probably because I was having so much fun and drank so much alcohol. So not having the time to make lunch, I went to a convenience store and picked out some random bread and other items, and took them to the cashier. At that time, I was idly looking at social networking sites to kill time when I suddenly received a series of messages. What? My phone snapped to life and a message appeared on the screen. I looked at the notification and was surprised to see the name Karen. It was so nice to see you yesterday. I guess Sophia didn't notice at all. I can't wait for you to divorce that monster. I got a series of pompous notifications. Yesterday probably means my son's birthday party. Karen was also at yesterday's birthday party. And Sophia was me. She's talking about divorce, so maybe it is. I hurried to open the message screen and found that all the messages had already been cancelled. I knew that the message from my friend was meant for my husband. Did this mean that my husband and Karen were having an affair? I was so confused. But Karen is one of my good friends from high school. I would hate to think that she would have an affair with my husband. But what does she mean by monster? That bothered, that bothered me very much. I went home extremely bewildered. 
A few hours later, my husband came home with an unsuspecting look on his face. He must have received a message from Karen and was responding to it. Was my husband talking bad about me, too? Just like Karen had called me a monster? I couldn't calm down because I was worried about that. I spent the next few days in a bewildered mood, and then the weekend arrived. I had made a plan. That's something you're not supposed to do, but if this would help me get proof, I thought I would do it. I bought some expensive booze today. It's the weekend. Why don't we have a drink? That's unusual. What's the matter? It looked kind of tasty, so I bought some. There's some cured ham, camembert cheese, and some snacks. Yay! Let's have a drink after dinner as soon as possible. My husband happily accepted the invitation. Actually, what I bought was expensive, but it also had a high alcohol content. My husband likes to drink, but he gets sleepy easily. So, I decided to wait for him to get drunk by giving him a delicious high alcohol content drink. And my husband was like, Wow, it's so good. He drank more and more alcohol as he said it. And as expected, he fell asleep right away. I immediately decided to implement the plan. It was to take my husband's thumb and do the fingerprint authentication of his phone. My husband, who was sleeping and snoring, did not wake up when I held his thumb. I then immediately opened the messages app. As soon as I brought up the talk screen, Karen was at the top of the list. I opened it up and there were some shocking contents. The week after next, we'll finally celebrate our fifth anniversary of dating. I can't wait to marry you, Chris. If you don't hurry up with a divorce, I'll be in trouble. I understand that you don't want to pay child support, but you don't want to be with that monster anymore, do you? She is calling me a monster again. What in the world is this? Then I read through my husband and Karen's messages and found out why I was called a monster. It was a long time ago when I was pregnant. Our current house was built when our son was two years old and before that, my husband and I lived in a small apartment. My husband came home after drinking and suddenly started to smoke. At the time, I was in a bad physical condition due to severe morning sickness and I was in a temper. I was extremely angry at my husband who had no consideration for his pregnant wife for coming home after drinking alcohol and lighting up a cigarette. And I was in the shape of an ogre. If you want to smoke, go out on the balcony, I told my husband. He said that my face at that time looked like a monster and scared him so much. Karen and Chris seem to be using that as a story and calling me a monster. I was appalled at the two of them for having an affair for that long on top of all that nonsense. And I vowed to get revenge on both of them. I immediately took pictures of my husband's and Karen's messages with my own phone. They were also planning a trip to celebrate their fifth anniversary. My husband said he had a business trip that day. In other words, they had been planning it for some time. I immediately began preparing for the divorce. I consulted a lawyer first, and he said that those messages alone are enough proof of adultery. If I could get a divorce for my husband's fault, there would be no problem. When I found out that he was having an affair, I lost all affection for Chris at once. About two weeks later, my husband was leaving the house early in the morning with his carry-on case. Oh my, are you leaving already? Well, the company took the fastest flight out. I have to take the first train to catch the flight. Oh, is it because it's the cheapest one? You must have skimped on the airfare. That's the way it is with the companies. I almost blew up. How could you lie so brazenly, assuming I didn't know it about it? I'm off then. My husband says so and I stopped him. What? I told you I have to hurry. You're lying about the business trip. My husband was upset because I suddenly said that. What are you talking about? 
I told you in advance that it was a business trip. It was a pre-arranged trip, wasn't it? You are meeting Karen. The mention of the name Karen upset my husband even more. Wait a minute, a trip? Karen? I don't see what you're talking about at all. I'm just going on a business trip by myself. You're just going to bluff your way through this, but Karen confessed. She said she was going on a trip with you with no strings attached. That means you've been having an affair, right? Karen already explained it to me. Wait, that's a misunderstanding. My husband defended himself, looking pale. I'm just doing Karen a favor. I don't have anything to do with her. Oh, really? What was the favor? Well, she asked me to go with her to check out a luxury hotel she was thinking of booking as a birthday gift for her boyfriend to see if it was a good one. I almost blew up again. How dare he come up with such a lie trying to deceive me? Did he think I was a very pure girl or something? So you're saying you're not having an affair? Yes, of course. In fact, we have separate rooms. Then why doesn't he just let Karen go down there by herself? What he is saying is too messed up. So what's this about? I cornered him and showed him something and he started shaking. Those messages between me and Karen. It says here that you've been together five years and you want to divorce a monster like me as soon as possible, right? My husband was frozen with his mouth agape. Then the time for the first train was already passed and Chris received an incoming call on his phone. I quickly snatched the phone from my husband and answered the call. I pressed the call button and heard Karen's voice. Hey Chris, did you get on the train? Hello, Karen. Why are you so surprised? What? Sophia? But why? Because I found out that Chris lied about his business trip and was having an affair. Oh, no. Oh, by the way, you must be in a hurry. It's a luxury hotel, right? It would be a shame to cancel. So you and Chris can go on your fifth anniversary trip. Of course, when you come back, I'll charge you with alimony. I'll also have to send a content certified letter to Chris and Karen's workplaces. And of course, I'll have to report back to their parents' homes. I also have to report it to our good friends group and Chris's friends. Wait a minute. If you do that, we'll be socially finished. Well, that's what you deserve, I guess. I'm going to be busy. And since Chris is such a nuisance at home, I'd appreciate it if you'd leave the house. Why don't you go enjoy your last luxury trip before you get into debt? Karen fell silent when he, I said that. I handed the phone back to my husband. Anyway, you're in my way, so get the hell out of my house. And chased my husband out of the house. No, wait, Sophia, please. My husband said this to me in a pale, disappearing voice, but I ignored him, locked the house, and got into the shower. When I got out of the shower and finished getting ready, my husband was already gone. I then went to work and went to a lawyer after work. Then I really did what I had just said to Karen and her husband. I don't know if those two went actually on that trip, but when they came back, it was sure to be a big fight. Then, two days passed and Chris and Karen came home together. Wait a minute! You can't really be doing all of this! I've been getting calls from my company asking me what's going on, messages of cutting ties with me from my close group of friends, and my parents have told me they're disowning me. How can you take responsibility for this? Karen screams emotionally, her face turning red. My husband is angry too. I didn't think you will go that far, bitch. You're acting like you're the victim here, but you have a fault too. But you try to put us all in a social predicament. You're such a monster, you know that? When my husband said that much, my father came out of the living room. Hey, how much more do you need to insult my daughter? 
William. My husband was startled by my father's appearance. No, this was... Well, I got emotional and said something I hadn't expected to say. I don't want to hear any excuses. You two, come here. My father said with a frightened look on his face. My husband and Karen are frozen, their faces scrunched up. I told you to come here. My father said twice, and the two of them rush into the house in a frightened panic. When they entered their living room, they were absolutely stunned. My parents, my husband's parents, a group of friends who were close to me and Karen, and a group of friends who were close to my husband were all in the living room. Why are they all here? I invited them. You guys were going to attack me anyway, so I called them. Everyone gave them cold stares. Karen, you're disgusting. I heard your conversation earlier, and I didn't think you were such a bad judge of a character. Well... A good friend of mine and Karen accuses Karen. Chris, you're not a manly man. How can you call a woman you married a monster? It's just... And my father-in-law stood in front of my husband and slapped him. You should never come back to your parents' house again. You're a disgrace to the family. Apologize to Sophia right away. My husband apologized to me, holding his cheek as my father-in-law hit him. Sophia, I am so sorry for saying terrible things and hurting you. Karen, you should apologize too. My friend exclaimed, and Karen came to me saying she was truly sorry too. Of course, you two need to apologize, but don't expect me to forgive you for that. With that, I called my lawyer who was waiting for me in the next room. This is my lawyer. Let's talk about the alimony right away. When I said this, they both turned pale. The lawyer proceeded with the conversation without worrying about their reactions. The two of you have admitted to having an affair, and you have been having an affair for five years. Therefore, Sophia can claim 60,000 in alimony for each of you. 60,000? We can't pay that much money. When the two of them shouted that, the people around them attacked them all at once. You can pay it in installments. You had an affair, you should be punished that much. With no one on their side, Chris and Karen fell silent. The lawyer then proceeded to explain the situation to them in an indifferent manner and handed them the documents. If you fail to pay, we will seize your wages immediately. My husband and Karen no longer looked sane. My husband and I successfully obtained a divorce. I demanded alimony of 60000 each from my husband and Karen, and I also demanded child support. My husband seemed to have thought that he could pay me by selling the house, but of course, I demanded a share of the property. I demanded that he pay me half of the house's appraised value if the house was to be in his name. My husband didn't think he had to give me so much property. He sold the house for 500000 but 250000 was mine. Furthermore, the mortgage still had 150000 left, so my husband only had 100000 left. And 60000 would disappear with the alimony for the affair, so he would have 40000 left from which he would have to pay child support every month. Moreover, my husband has lost the trust of people at his company because of this incident, so it has become difficult for him to get promoted. So, he had to continue paying child support on a low salary, living a poor life. Since Karen works for an all-female company and her affair was discovered, her colleagues and even her bosses look at her coldly, and she feels small every day. Furthermore, since they have been disowned by their parents, they cannot ask for help in paying the alimony, and most of their salaries have disappeared to pay the bills. They have also both lost a lot of friends and are feeling lonely. It's a really good feeling. 
On the other hand, although I was extremely shocked and saddened, I was also glad that I was able to secure my son's tuition and other expenses because I got a lot of money all at once. After that, I went back to my parents' house with my son. My son seemed rather happy to live with his grandparents, whom he loves. From now on, I will live strong as a single mother and raise my son. He is such a lousy man for having an affair with his wife's friend for five years. I wish he could be more socially sanctioned. But whatever the case, I'm glad that Sophia got what she could get and was able to cut ties with Chris. I know it will be tough as a single mother from now on, but I hope you and your son get along and live happily ever after.